Hello and welcome everyone to World Vegan Vision Mumbai and its first online conference in 2021. My name is Ruchika Chitrabhanu and I warmly welcome you all today for the series of Awakening Souls. World Vegan Vision is a global non-profit organization based in New York, USA. founded by Harshad Shah and his wife Malti Shah So the first speaker for the day is Pramoda ji Chitrapanu The world vegan vision is giving all of us a good opportunity to share our thoughts with all of you and to encourage and inspire us to move on the path of non-violence and compassion i would like to start my talk with a prayer which is a very favorite prayer for me natvaham kamaye rajyam na swargam na punarbhavam kamaye dukha taptanam pranina marti mochanam O oh Lord I do not long for the kingdom nor do I long for any rebirth or heaven all I long for is to remove the suffering and infliction of the innocent living beings This verse is a Sanskrit verse taken from. It's mentioned in Mahabharata's Drona Parva, and has been recited by King Ranti Dev ever since he came in touch with this shloka. He was a very spiritual person, and this stanza reveals the. true meaning of non violence and it allows us to ponder on this and makes us feel that when we recite these kind of prayers or stanzas it definitely has a tremendous impact on our consciousness and if we keep on repeating this it definitely helps us to change our lifestyle and to be more aware of whatever we do in this world for thousands of years people world over has sought after ahimsa and as an inherent living active expression of god within the word ahimsa comes from a sanskrit language which means non violence or non killing when seen in a more positive context it means dynamic harm- harmlessness and dynamic compassion such a definition would not only encompass the renunciation of the will to kill but also the renunciation of the intention to not to hurt any living being through hostile thought word or deed it's a very very broad term and because of that the power of ahimsa is tremendous and we can see that power of ahimsa when mahatma gandhi really used this ahimsa to drive away britishers from the indian soil this is a conscious integration of compassion in every aspect of our daily life i would like to just quote something which supports our thinking of non violence that mahatma gandhi said in one of his books he said that quote 
Nonviolence is an active force of the highest order. It is a soul force or the power of Godhead within us. Imperfect man cannot grasp the whole of the essence. He would not be able to bear its full place, but even an infinitesimal fraction of it, when it becomes active within us, can work wonders." Unquote. He has touched the subject of my today's talk, that ahimsa is an expression of God within. If the God within is not awakened, if the God within is not aware, if the God within is not activated, there is no ahimsa in the outside world. So ahimsa, the force of ahimsa, when it is active, it extends to every living being. And when it extends to every living being, it therefore, and therefore, protection of environment, natural habitats, vegetarianism, veganism are the natural derivatives. Because then we don't have to work for it when we are non-violent within ourselves, and when our God is awake, the results are that we will protect the environment, we will be very careful in whatever we do, so not to hurt the planet Earth, we will protect the natural habitats, we will spread the message of vegetarianism and veganism, and we will try not to hurt any living being with our will. So this is a very, very powerful word, Ahimsa. It's very powerful. And when put into practice, it activates the God within us. So when I was thinking about this subject, something came to my mind that Ahimsa, when it is active, we must know that God is awake. When Ahimsa is not active, we know that our God, the goodness, the Godhood within us is not awake. It is dormant, it is sleeping. Each and every life that exists and lives on this planet holds the same spark of divinity within them that we all hold. So when we hurt any life, that divinity in that life is destroyed and we are hurting that divinity. So ahimsa in every cell of our being can really change our way of living but it, it inspires others also to live the same way. Since time immemorial, scripture studies and researches have revealed one fact, and that is, uh, which is a common thread running in every living being is the desire to be happy and not, and to live and the desire not to die and not to be unhappy. It's in every one of us. Everything that we do, we desire that we want to be happy. All our activities are geared towards keeping ourselves alive, keeping ourselves alive, keeping ourselves happy, keeping in mind that nothing wrong goes in my life. I don't like unhappiness. I don't like pain. I don't like suffering. So if we see this in other living beings, we will not harm them because they also desire to live the way we want to. 
if we see that if we try to even catch a tiny little ant, it's so afraid of us that it runs away from us. It goes away. We cannot catch because it doesn't want to die. It wants to, it wants its freedom. It wants its life. Even a tiny ant works for his happiness. But man in its pursuit of pleasure and happiness exploits everyone and everything that comes in his life. Everything. And it also engages himself in violent acts like hunting, killing, confining the freely roaming animals and creatures. And to go further, even puts and eats food that involves violence. It can be non-animal food, it can be dairy food, and as we all know, the dairy industry has become an industry. It is no more a dairy where cows are allowed, baby cows are allowed to drink their mother's milk. So all these things comes from the ignorance of the human mind and the human beings are after their own pleasure and their own gratification. But by doing this, the human being abuses the animals. In doing that, he himself abuses himself. So he forgets that he's part of this planet as the, all living beings are. So when we are part of this planet, if we misbehave, we will get the consequence and we will have to suffer the consequence. And we forget that the universal law of vibrations cannot fail. So what we sow, so shall we grow. And when we are thinking that we, the world is for ourselves and the creatures are just a commodity, for us to use, we are really kidding ourselves. We are still not in tune with the nature and the environment. And that is why we say that the God within is asleep when we are violent and the God is awake when we are non-violent in the outside world as well as inside because we have to be first non-violent to our own self. If we abuse our body, if we do things that are not conducive for our mental growth, emotional growth and spiritual growth, we will lose and let go of this beautiful opportunity that we have as human beings who can think and then do whatever they want to do. So it is very important for us to know that if we don't do anything, our life will end miserably. And when life ends miserably, there is a lot of pain and there is a lot of suffering. In life, what is life? Life is a great symphony in which each and every individual is assigned a different instrument. And if we see the world with this perspective, we will not hurt any living being because if one instrument breaks, the whole symphony of life gets disrupted. We all are interconnected. And so we are a vital thread in another's life tapestry. So if one life is threatened, all of us are at risk. 
so to bring this awareness we need some kind of discipline in our life and to awaken and activate that god within us we need some time to reflect to introspect to meditate and when we do that we take some time to ourselves and find out who am i am i the body or am i the consciousness because as gandhi said it's a soul force and it is a powerful force that we all are withholding within us but we have never recognized that force and that force can be called consciousness soul atma divinity pure self pure light spirit we may call it in any name but it means that that within us makes everything active and when we try to diminish and try to silent and silence that voice within us we are doing greater harm to ourselves than anyone else because this journey of our is very short and when our journey is short we want to do the best that is good for our growth and ultimately even that king ranti dev who was a king and he saw the futility of kingdom the futility of wealth the futility of everything palace and everything and all he saw was that he only wanted to remove the pain and affliction of the in suffering innocent be what a lofty thought so beautiful and if we try to inculcate even a small part of it in our life and practice ahimsa in life the atma within us will be activated and will be awake the day we are not practicing ahimsa in our life we know that the god within us is away not awake to keep our god awake we have to keep on practicing ahimsa to his fullest strength and fullest capacity because this time will not come back and there is lot of suffering in the world and i don't want to be part of that suffering i don't want to be part of any one's pain or any and affliction so when we understand that even if i can't give happiness to anyone i will not give any pain so let us make a di- difference in someone else's life be a whisper or be a scream be a voice for the voiceless being <clears throat> we can be a whisper we may not be able to do things for them but we can inspire others who can do it we can help them in different ways with our thoughts with our words with our deeds and in this way we want to celebrate this human birth and make the best use of it but hubert reeves says something different about mankind he says that man is the most insane species he worships an invisible god and slaughters a visible nature without realizing that this nature he slaughters is this invisible god he worships so when we start seeing godhood in everyone will we will start respecting and rever- revering those creatures they do not have voice to express their pain but we can feel their love so someone asked me okay, what is god according to you 
So I said, God is love. Love is God. Because when we have a cat and a dog, we pet the cat or pet the dog. We are expressing our love for the dog. So the love is not seen, but it is seen through their happiness. They are wagging their tail, coming and cuddling with, towards us. All this is nothing but the expression of God within. We do not see God, but through the expression, we have to believe that there is one entity that exists in this universe and in us, because microcosm is macrocosm. So it is in us and it is out in the universe. So when we know that, that this entity is pure love and but we don't see that. Would you not believe it? Who has seen the wind? Neither you nor I. But when the winds, bow, when the trees bow down their head, we know the wind is passing by. And we believe in that, that when the trees bow down their head, there has to be a wind that has passed by. So the love, the expression of love, the expression of compassion, the expression of reverence for each and every living being. That is God that is expressing itself through our action, through our feeling, through our being kind to living beings. So Ahinsa is an expression of God within, because if that God was not there, awakened, aware, we would not be non-violent. We would be violent. And that's why Gandhiji said that even a small spark touches this ignorant people, it will, it has such a power that it will make a tremendous difference in their life. Maybe we cannot do everything, but we can do something. In a small way, we can change ourselves. We can change our life. And changing our life, we will change everyone around us. So live in, a, in, a, in such a way that those who know you but do not know God will come to know God because they know you. Live in such a way that those who know you but do not know God will know God because they know you. Our life becomes full of compassion, full of love, full of happiness, full of peace, because all these things bring peace, tranquility, and happiness in our life. So when happiness, peace, and tranquility comes in us, we permeate that in the rest of the universe. We cannot give that we don't have. If we don't have happiness, we cannot give happiness. If we don't have peace, we cannot give peace. So let us surround ourselves with those kind of people who can inspire us, encourage us to bring a change in our lifestyle. We need change in our lifestyle. Today, the world is going through a very, very different times where we are afraid even to step out. Our lifestyle involves so much violence, so much environmental destruction, ecological imbalance, global warming, all this is because of our greed and 
gratification of our desires, human desires, and that there is no end to all these things. We cannot change the world, but as Gandhiji said, be the change that you wish to see in the world. We have to be that change. We want to be that change so that we know that our one person changes has a tremendous ripple effect to the rest of the world. So we have to start with our own self and look within and see that today my day, how did it go? Let us introspect, let us inquire, let us reflect and come in touch with the inner core and try to understand that there is something so beautiful within us that our identification with the body is so strong that it doesn't allow us to get in touch with that. And that was the reason Lord Mahavira left palatial place as a prince and for 12 and a half years went into wilderness to purify three things, his thoughts, his words, and his deeds. And what did he do for his thoughts? He meditated. For his words, he observed silence. And for his deeds, he did penance. At least he ate and whatever he ate was something which involved least violence. And today, everyone remembers him after 2,600 years. We still remember him. We still remember Buddha. We still remember Jesus. So whoever cannot practice, we should not have any hatred towards that living being because they did not have the opportunity to know about what life is. So, as Jesus Christ mentioned that hate the sin, not the sinner. We do not have any right to be violent, to dislike, to hate those who do not follow the way we follow or do not agree with whatever we are doing. No, they will also do it. You be an example. And even if they don't do, they are not given that opportunity. They are not educated. So let's educate them. Let's bring that awareness towards all living beings so everyone can try to change their life and play a great role in spreading the message of nonviolence. I would like to just mention at the last that what Bhagwan Mahavir said was that to sum up, he, his quote, Lord, Lord Mahavir expressed it, one who neglects or disregards the existence of earth, water, fire, air, vegetation, and all other living beings disregards his own existence which is entwined with them. So as I mentioned before, we are all interconnected. So if we disregard their existence and feel that they are just things for us to use, they don't have life. I think we are being more ignorant than being more knowledgeable and understanding. So, Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to speak. And I thank World Vegan Vision, Mr. H. K. Shah and Madhivan Shah for giving me this time and opportunity to share my thoughts with all of you. Namaste.